I am loving the AAF and XFL players that are getting shots in the NFL. And Dearness Johnson, his his story is phenomenal. Sent DMs Crazy. to all the AAF yeah. teams and be like, "Hey man, give me a shot. I'm all right. Here's my here's my highlight tape. Like check out my mixtape. It's great." And he looked <laughs> great. Like honestly, I I'm excited about him in the future. I think this is basically the replacement to Kareem Hunt, not in the same role, obviously, but Kareem Hunt's eventually not going to be on that team because they can't afford Hunt and Chubb. Right. But Dearness Johnson could be that second guy up. So I'm pretty mm -hmm. excited about that for the Browns. Chubb, Johnson, and Felton. <clears throat> I'm down. Yeah. Okay. Well, better days ahead. Did they trade sure. Hunt? I know because they're gonna try they're gonna try to make a Super Bowl run. Yeah. It's not not looking good. They need yeah. everybody healthy to make that happen, but yeah. I, I think they're going to try right, to ride right. it food out. For thought, food for I, thought. I mean, if they if they were worse than they were right now, if it was like a two and five or something, I'd say yeah. But since they're like right in the mix, um, speaking of it out. speaking of right, yeah, let's do a little right wrong. Really, we haven't done this in a couple weeks, so we're going to bring it back. Um, who wants to go first with their rights? Mine are kind of boring, so somebody else start. I can I can start. I love talking about the Eagles. Um, so my right, this has been a few years, a few weeks coming here, but before the season, the majority of last year, everyone was saying, Ertz is done, he's washed, blah, 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 blah. So my right is obviously Zach Ertz, if you haven't caught on here. But even though before yeah. last year's Eagles blow up, he had been a top three tight end in the league for five straight years. So without an offensive line, without team, just terrible team all around, people just were like, oh yeah, it's because of Ertz, he's the bad problem. Now he's on the best offense in the football. And within his first, like, half of a week with the Cardinals. He already got five targets. I was not expecting that at all. That 40 yard touchdown. He actually got a record for against uh, to catching two football or two touchdowns on two different teams in the same season. That was the first time anyone's ever done it, which is kind of wild or in back to back yeah. weeks. It's, it's, it's kind of wild, but I mean, usually they don't roll them out immediately right after. So, right. but people have asked me how I feel about this trade and I'm personally ecstatic for him and Goddard. I mean, there was never a chance of us just having Ertz or just having Goddard or both having both of them together. So we get to sign Goddard for cheaper. Ertz gets to go probably get himself another ring. And honestly, I, I there's a lot of people on this team that deserves a ring and I'm loving, I'm rooting for Arizona. Like I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And Ertz is a champ. If you didn't pick him up, sucks to suck. Yeah. Ertz look good, man. <clears throat> Kyler was loving those tight ends this year. He really is. He really is. Poor kind Max Williams. Yeah. yeah fuck, fuck uh, Ertz is an upgrade over Max Williams. Yeah. All right, Joe. How about it? <clighs> I'm gonna take this time to gloat uh -oh. and say that. Uh, oh man, stretching it out here. Just relax. Stretch I was, out. I was right about Sam Darnold, man. He's starting to look more and more like a trash can every <laughs> second of the day. Honestly, if you didn't have glasses on, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So he got benched for PJ Walker last week. PJ Walker didn't exa exactly look good, but. The honeymoon's over. It's back to reality for Sam Darnold, man. He's got his house payment. And he's got electric to pay. He's got a car payment coming up. And it just doesn't look nearly as good as it did at the start. So welcome to trash land. Welcome to trash, trash land. land. God, I love it. All right. Well, I got a pair of rights. Um, and this is from back in the preseason. So when we had Jordan on the pod, when it was me, Josh, and Jordan, um, and it was that defensive pod, I raised a couple of questions about a couple of guys, uh, one of them being Jalen Smith of the Cowboys. We've seen how that's played out. It He was not the good fit for the Cowboys, and now he's on the Packers. But my second one I raised a question on was Zach Cunningham of the Texans. And he is all but irrelevant now for the Texans. And he was going into the season like he led the league in tackles last season. Everybody had like was drafted him pretty high in IDP. Because we expected a lot from him. And I re I was reading articles before the season that were saying, like, hey, the Texans aren't really sold on Zach Cunningham. They're going to give a couple more people some chances, and he might not even have a role. And that's come to fruition. He's on the trade block right now, and Christian Kirksey, uh, Greenard, all those guys have all kind of grown into that role. And so – I. I just think I was right to mention that there were some issues going into the season. You know, some of those beat writers, they actually are kind of locked in. So I'm considering myself right about that. Sometimes they're right. They are sometimes, but those two were dead right. And oh, yeah. I mentioned it yeah. before the season. Well, I'm pretty sure that we had that conversation. I'm pretty sure Jordan said that Van Der Esch was going to get traded. And Jalen yeah, Smith he did. Not he, he, he owes a 
fireball bet on here, by the way. Okay, well, let's have him as a guest sometime. We need to get him on here to do that sometime. All right, are we going to wrongs? Yep, let's get this to the wrongs. This one's going to hurt a lot. So <laughs> yeah, all of waiting. our all of our listeners have heard me talk about this guy, and we, I, I understand that this is long overdue. So I want to apologize for all my off-season transgressions against Jamar Chase. No, you heard me right, Jamar Chase. Yeah. We talked about it after the football and the white circles and stuff like that. I get it. Like, I I thought he wasn't going to be good. And Jamar Chase was the absolute right pick for the Bengals. Yeah, their O-line is still pretty rough, but I think 80-yard touchdowns outweigh, you know, Joe Burrow's life. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. But, I mean, the, the sacks here are going to happen. Joe Burrow just has to be smart and, you know, take them and not try to scramble and do weird stuff, especially after that knee injury. But I just – they can continue to build this in the future. And the fact that they are – winning the division right now after beating the Ravens last week this, this Jamar chase is wild. I was absolutely wrong. I wish I would have at least got some stock in him somewhere. Like he was going so low. It was like sixth round. It was, you, I don't know. I, I feel like I owe a fireball bet to this one as well. I don't, I don't know. Like dude's a league winner, like people with Jamar chase, as long as he stays healthy, are probably going to win leagues for sure. I, I just want to, not you really no. well. I just want to I just want to piggyback on the wrong because mine is also the Bengals. I also made the call, took the fireball bet before the season, took my fireball shot during the draft, saying that they need to take Penna Sewell over Jamar Chase because Jamar Chase was not going to change the trajectory of this team. And what do you want me to do? They're the fucking best team in the AFC North. I can't do anything to, about that. To be fair, Penny Sewell is a generational talent as well. And he he's is, gonna be a great offensive it, like it Detroit, Detroit matter, Lions like, offensive line is phenomenal, and that is gonna grow that team in the future. We'll it's true, about but the Bengals, only, the Bengals only needed one player, and that player was Jamar Chase, apparently. So, Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. It's wild. It's pretty nuts, man. I'm I'm a little sad that I traded him to you, but AJ Brown was solid. I that like beat. Him. Nah, dude. AJ Brown's going to kill it. So my wrong is Mike Davis. I was pretty high on this dude, basically saying that, hey, someone's got to run the ball in Atlanta, and it's going to be Mike Davis, and he's going to be good, and all of that came crashing down. Cordell Patterson stole the show. Um, at this point, I just wish they would bench Mike Davis. I mean, it's, it's horrible. He had one point last week. That was pretty phenomenal. Four carries. And uh, Cordell Patterson also looks like he could be a league winner. I don't, I still don't buy it as being sustainable, but oh, we shall see. We I've been see. trying to offload Patterson and Dynasty. <laughs> Nobody is biting. And I'm like, well, yeah, I could win you the league. I'm on your team. <laughs> He's a league winner. And then you, yeah. Exactly. And nobody wants him. <laughs> and then you have him end your career there, and he, or you have exactly. to drop him to free agency. It'll be the, end of, the end of it will be this year. <laughs> so you're not just going to admit. You could just put your really and your, your wrong in the same one, Josh, I think. No. So my really – Am I really here? I think I think you guys are getting excited about this, and you shouldn't. Well, I the fact that you're going to defend this is I have to hear it. Good, good. So obviously, everyone thought my wrong might be Kyle Pitts, which he's obviously my really. And so my really is really everyone after a largely mediocre first four weeks, he has two good weeks. It's I'll be a key. Shut up. I'll be at great weeks against two of the worst defenses. In the league, and y'all want to crown him like he's the goddamn king of tight ends over here. CJ Uzama, <laughs> Dawson Knox, Mike Gusecki's. What do these players have in common? You didn't draft them in the fourth round, or probably even drop them at all. So you have these people who are literally just as good, if not more consistent, because you've gotten two good weeks out of Kyle Pitts, which you probably won those games, I would say. But they have been just as impressive, if not more impressive this year. So I never said Kyle Pitts was going to be bad. Once oh again, my god! I okay. never did. I mean, I I don't think I did, but I, I if I did, sure, whatever. But I did say that there he was not going to be the tight end one, or he's going to be worth that fourth round, that fourth pick that you got. Like I, you could have grabbed Cooper Cup right there, and you could have been in better shape. Oh right my there. god! I'm just saying. I mean, you could have. What? So, now this is what's you could have. You could have drafted. Uh... Fucking what's his name from San Francisco to, to Kittle, and you would have been even more screwed. To be fair, I wasn't on Kittle as high, but anyway, or Hawkinson. Hawkinson or... is actually uh, one point below Kyle Pitts right now. So Dude, one, okay. one of them is going up, one of them is going down. All right. In a year, 
When you guys don't even let game, me finish. You guys no, no, don't no. even let me finish. I wasn't because done. you're wrong. Damn. Right. Like, in a I, year where three catches for 40 yards and a touchdown is like awesome for a fucking tight end, you're really going to hate on this dude going not over 100 yards, but massively over 100 yards in two right. games. 160. Number one. In one two, weeks ago, two weeks ago, Ridley was not there. There was nothing on that team. Like, obviously, he was going to do good. I'm not going to be Jordan and do a weird face live, live stream on Twitter and say, Kyle Pitts isn't going to have a good week because he was going to have a good week. <laughs> we all knew he was going to have a good week. Last week, played a terrible team again. Like, he's going to have good weeks against terrible teams. I never said he wasn't good. I just said he's not worth the fourth-round pick. And I think you'll see that in these next four matchups. They're going to temper some expectations. I assume that none of these are going to be 100-yard games. I assume that he's going to have... Maybe he has. I mean, his touchdowns aren't looking that good. Yeah, he had oh 180 yards God. last week. I'm just saying, Kyle Pitts is not it. Not this year. Next year, maybe. You, sir, this are is, one of a kind. This is so wild. He's literally like broken the record for a rookie tight end through the first seven games. And you're still there out here always, saying there are it. always records like that. Oh, the first 17. It's never okay. It hasn't happened blah, since blah, blah, Mike blah. Ditka. Mike Ditka held the record until Kyle Pitts just broke it. I'm just saying. Mike Dicka was pretty good. <laughs> Are you saying Mike Dicka is not good, Josh? Never said that either. <laughs> I'm going to say our friendship might be let's see. Let's, let's see what he does next to these next four games. These next four games don't look good for him. So okay. I want to see him get 180 against we'll, a good team before I start we'll, crowding him. The best oh, my God. Tight so ends. he has to get 180 versus a good team. And no, that's I want to see like, him. Well, do when's the last time a tight end got 180 when, yards? When's exactly. the last time he did something <laughs> good ago? against a good team? Never. God, his his trajectory is literally going this way because guess what? You know what the Atlanta Falcons have finally figured out? If you line him as up as a wide receiver, you can use him as a wide receiver. It's shocking. It's mind-boggling that you can do that, but they've been doing that, and it's been working. Same with Mike Gesicki, by the way, who's played two snaps, uh, two targets from the tight end role. He has only lined up at wide receiver, and he's been eating from the wide receiver position. It, it's Kyle just, Pitts. They finally is, figured yeah. out how to use him. He play, he's played 27% of his snaps as a tight end. He's played 43% out of the slot and 30% lined up out wide. So he's not a tight end. He's a wide receiver. Exactly. Which, by that's, the way, that's this a is a great long, game for a wide receiver. Honestly, so. this, this uh, offseason, I think people are really going to be pitching the uh, just get rid of wide receiver and tight ends and just make them all wide receivers. I really think that's going to get pitched. Panthers, Saints, Cowboys, Patriots. Good luck. Okay, we'll see what we'll see what he can do. His trajectory, like I said, going up. His trajectory is going to go back down and Pitts, back to normal. Pitts on one side, Ridley on the other. That's me and Joe are literally saying remember, that's how you, they should use back, him before the season. Do you remember back in the day, whenever you were like, "Oh man, you start this running back because he's playing the Jets." Like that's what this was. <clears throat> he played shitty teams. He did good. Oh my God. Oh, uh, this is this is gonna be good. For All right, what are you guys wrong? What are you guys' reallys? What do you guys have for this? All right, I'll go. I'll go to my really next. Uh, really, Pat Mahomes. What the fuck is going on, my guy? What See, are we this... doing here? Yeah. No, I mean, really, like, what? Like, why are we doing this inconsistent stuff? I'm not saying not to play. I'm not saying no, to drop I'm saying, him. I'm saying low hanging fruit. This is your really. I, I, I'm telling you real shit right here about Kyle. Pitt. You know, continue. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll mute myself. Get off the soapbox for a second. I was about to say, first of all, your Kyle Pitts thing is insane. After he goes for 160 yards, you're defending that he's still garbage and should insane in the membrane. That is nuts. I'm literally saying, Pat Mahomes, what the hell is going on? What is wrong? You played Tennessee, who had a garbage secondary. They're all hurt. They were all backups. Three points, Joe. Like I don't understand what's going on. Like, uh, are you okay? Like, is the separation not there? Or like, who, what is going on? I think we need to have like an exorcism in KC to get whatever's wrong with him. There has out. to be an exorcism. But there, there's something wrong. Like, I don't I mean, know what it is yet. Patrick Mahomes has not looked healthy like the last three games. I know last week was a crowning blow, taking a knee to the head, but <laughs> yeah. something's been off there. He's not moving as good as he usually did. Kelsey clearly is not 100% after taking that stinger or massive blow to the head, which is clearly a concussion, but he's not back. 
And then Tyreek Hill is explosive, but when you hurt your quadriceps, he's not getting off the line nearly as quick well, as he we, normally does. Can so. we admit that just having Kelsey and, and Hill might not be the best course of action? Like, can, no, can we finally admit it out loud? Can KC finally see that? Not at all. But that? the problem with KC is they're not getting those improv plays because everyone's hurt. I mean, if Mahomes is going to scramble down and sidearm one to Hill, who's 30 yards wide open down the field, that doesn't happen when they're hurt. And so it's just a matter of them not being – not being good. Okay, yeah. so my thing about KC is everyone is so worried about Patrick Mahomes because he's the you know next coming of Christ as quarterbacks, which he he is phenomenal. You know, I think everybody can agree on that. Yeah, they're allowed to have off seasons, off games. Like you know what I mean? Like the the Patriots lose to the, the well back when he, Brady was it's even not, there. Uh, no, no, no. Talk about the Patriots okay. would lose to the Jets or the Dolphins randomly when mm -hmm. they were and it, it was Tom Brady. Like Tom Brady should do that. They should you know they should always win. They're they're the best team. It's they got the best quarterback. Mahomes is going to be fine. This is a weird learning situation for them. Their defense is terrible. This is what happens when you don't add anything. You no, rebuild that, an offensive line. That's no, I problem. get it. I get it. But they're still they're still Tyree Kill. They're still Kelsey. They're still Mahomes. They're still got a chance. Well, if one of them, I'm not saying they don't have a chance. They just have like I don't know what the issue is. Like you built this team around Mahomes being able to be Mahomes. If Mahomes isn't Mahomes, we're looking at a dog shit team. Honestly, nah, like, they'll still make they'll still make the playoffs. They'll still win ten games. They'll still. Probably I'm just make saying they the have AFC a hole to climb out of. Like, El like Chargers, way better than them. Like, they're going to get blown the out. Chargers the Chargers just got fucking wrecked. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, they just got uh, shit Baltimore on by Baltimore. Could, Baltimore could beat KC, too. They've already done it this season. I'm just saying. I, I just... You're saying Chargers are way better than them. They just they, got Chargers shit on by are way better than the Chiefs. The right Chiefs now. at least put a game up against Baltimore. Herbert couldn't get out off of the freaking okay. ten yard well, line. I, I get your one game sample size situation, but I'm saying that the Chargers are way better than the Chiefs right now. That's Can we just factual. give Tennessee some credit there? Yes, they T played Tennessee's a really good game good too. Yeah. They did. They they figured out a way to beat. I, honestly, he's really smart as well. Um, what's his name? Uh, guy who used to be on the Vrabel. Tannehill? Oh. No, Vrabel. Vrabel's a smart guy. He's he's a good coach and that team is not that good. And I'll get into that in my game preview, but well, I uh the Casey's defense is clear the, the clear liability on the team. Oh, clearly. for sure. Oh, yeah. Clearly. But I'm saying but Vrabel you, got a defensive package that could stop Mahomes is what he did. Yeah, but he shouldn't have the Kelsey. defense like the personnel is not what you need to beat Mahomes. Mahomes hmm. should have cooked them Agreed. like a Thanksgiving dinner and he didn't. So the problem is the rebuilt line seems great for running the ball, but they don't have a running back. Yeah, they don't and have they, a running back. I mean, they're not pass blocking the way they need to. I mean, Mahomes has time, but he doesn't have time like other great quarterbacks have in their pocket. I mean, fuck, look at Jameis before Pete got hurt. Or, yeah, uh, Pete got hurt. Friggin', he had all the time in the world to make any throw he wanted to in the, behind that line. Mahomes doesn't have that life, or luxury. Yeah. All right, Joe, good to you, really. All right, so I knew something was fishy when someone who I said doesn't belong in the NFL turned out to be playing at an all-pro level. <laughs> so upon doing some research, I found out that it's a contract year for Mike Williams and that he's just been a massive fucking jackass for four fucking years, and now he's going to get paid and some team's going to bite into this shit, and he's going to go back to absolutely being a piece of shit. So don't pay. If anyone, any NFL people are listening, don't pay Mike Williams. Man, we were taking some weird slander shots tonight. I'm honestly on Joe's side on this. Like when, when he said it was a contract year, everything was like, oh. But like the now offensive coordinator to... came out before the season and said, hey, we're going to use him like Michael Thomas. And we all just like laughed. That's not and even then, how Michael Thomas is used. That's not how Michael Thomas is used at all. But His they're targeting catches him the for 165 amount. yards and stuff. It's not that's not what Michael Thomas did. Michael Thomas had 14 catches for 160 yards. I'm saying, but the usage wise is what they're you know, they're using him a lot. It's a trap, Billy. It I, is. I, I hear I, you. I, actually, I would love if to you're make in a dynasty league. Like, sell that motherfucker. Do you yeah, think Herbert cares about his contract? Why would he? Herbert's no, but it's, him. it's yeah, it's that's not the point. Mike Williams is acting better. Now. Mike like, Williams he's just all of a sudden. So no you, all, you all are no, no, literally no. suggesting that he's playing better because he's in for a contract. But yes, he's going. Mike money. Williams has never shown any any sliver of separation from a defensive back. He just jogs down the field. Every touchdown he ever had was him just 
falling into the end zone and miraculously catching it. He didn't try. Now all of a sudden he's beating defenders. He's doing all these moves at the line of scrimmage. He looks like fucking Devontae Adams. Out he should there. have played the conspiracy corner music Dude, before his, this. His I'll throw no, it on there. No, no, no. We get in trouble. We, they, they'd copyright. Oh yeah, yeah. We anyway, can't real quick, real quick. Mike Williams in 2019, his best season ever, a thousand yards. He's on pace right now for I don't know the math, but more than a thousand yards. Like it, it's not that th- this is four years of him and him playing the majority of games in all of these. And he all of a sudden is just miraculously better. And I can just catch the ball and I'm just good. And I yet, just don't know why he would do that. It makes no sense. Cause he wants money. He wants well, he millions re- of dollars. He could have got a contract extension earlier. Nope. If he'd played Joe really Lombardi, better. right? That or is it, is it Brady? Who's their offensive coordinator now? Mm. Either way, I think, one, I think it's Lombard. Lombard. I do too. But one guy going there is not going to change the way this dude hustles. He's actually running. He's beating defenders. He looks like an absolute stud out there. And we've never seen that. Even with, you want to blame Philip Rivers for it? That's fine. But he wasn't getting open for Philip Rivers. Now all of a sudden, he's wide the fuck open out there. It's not scheming. It's, it's hustle. so wild. This is just so wild. I'm on Joe's side here. Fuck my I... I can't. I can't. Because I admitted they're... I was wrong about this fucking guy, and then I find out he's in a fucking contract year. It's fucking bullshit, man. That's dude. That's that's some shit. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fine. I'd, just whatever. wait till. Honestly, I would love to bet on his stats next year, like just to see what it is. I guarantee it's under a thousand. I mean, he yards. might be bad again, but I'm just saying this year that doesn't. I, I don't. Yeah, it's weird that he's scenario just all doesn't this, make sense. What's, He's going to do is he's going to waste that contract. It's going to be like an Alshon Jeffrey type contract where he's just making millions of dollars to sit on the bench, basically. I just don't know why anybody would do that. But I mean, okay, okay, I'm sure. at my money. job, I get I get a review on my job at the end of the year, right? So everyone has yeah. recency bias. So you work a little bit harder at the end of the year and you get good <laughs> reviews. He's doing the same thing, but get about to make millions and millions of fucking dollars. <laughs> it's if, just... if anyone from Club Champion listens to this, I work hard <laughs> all year. No matter what, him, so he's absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I I don't agree, but fine. I I'll we'll go down the rabbit hole with you on that. Um.